Hey guys, Wet Movie One here, back with another DVD Blu-ray update. Uh, I got a lot of stuff here to show you. The first one right here is from Sony. That is Think Like a Man. Uh, this one's based on a book by Steve Harvey uh, about relationships and stuff. Uh, that that's what it is in the movie. And uh, these girls come across this book or see Steve Harvey on a TV show talking about you know what men really think. So like these girls. You know, and here played by Gabrielle Union and uh, Taraji P. Henson and all, you know, all these other beautiful women in this movie read this book and they think they have it, you know, one up on men. So, uh, you know, they go out. It's, just, it's, it's, it's pretty much a relationship movie. Girls trying to get at the guys and the guys, you know, end up finding, you know, get, seeing what's going on and get their, their copy of the book so they can play their games and stuff. I found this movie uh, to be okay. Uh, the shining star of this movie to me is Kevin Hart. I've been a big fan of his stand-up comedy for years. And, uh, I always liked him in, like, Soul Plane and, you know, his little bit parts in movies like, what's it called, Paper Soldier? I think that was what it was called. But, uh, this movie was okay. Like I said, Kevin Hart's the one that stands out to me. It's just pretty much, like I said, a, a relationship movie. Guys getting, girls getting at the guys. Guys getting back at the girls by reading reading the book. There's not really that much more going on in this, and of course it has the kid from uh you know uh, Entourage in there. The guy who played Turtle in Entourage. Uh, that was one of the main reasons I wanted to get it. Like I said, to see uh, Kevin Hart you know shine in a movie. But uh, I would say this one right here is more of a high rental. It's not really like one you have to rush out to go buy. I don't think you know what I mean. It, it it's funny, but maybe. Maybe if I like, I was in a, like a relationship or something, I would find it to be more funnier. But uh, to me, it was just kind of like a eh, movie. It was funny, but it was just nothing super special to me. Uh, next up right here is from an Inception Media Group, and this one this one was awesome. I was really looking forward to, to checking this one out. This one's called Elevator. It's kind of like the movie Devil in a way, in the same concept of having people you know stuck on an elevator and not knowing what's going on. Uh, pretty much these people. Uh, all going to this uh, business, you know, uh, it's called work party, going up to the building for like a party for work or whatever. And uh, these people get stuck on this elevator with, and someone on the elevator has a bomb. And of course, you know, the elevator stops and, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. But then you shortly find out who has the bomb and why the person has the bomb. And then it's just people trying to get off the elevator because the elevator's stuck and they don't know how to get, you know, up out of there. So it's pretty much, you know, just the dynamic inside the elevator and seeing who and what's going to happen inside that elevator, you know? And the big thing that I saw in this movie, me and Sean from Cool Dude were talking about it when we were, uh, after, you know, when we were watching it. We don't watch it together, but, you know, when we were, after we watched it. And uh, we saw Buzz from uh, Home Alone in this movie. You, know, you guys all know the guy that uh, played Kevin McAllister's brother and stuff, you know, like, don't play with my tarantula, or like whatever he said in the movie. It was just cool to see him now, and he's still doing his thing. I thought he was very good in this movie. I don't want to. I don't want to like think I know his real name right now. But the guy that played Buzz from Home Alone is in this movie, and he had a really good part in this. I always love movies that take place in one location. You know what I mean? Like, um, kind of like Career Opportunities, the movie John Hughes writ, wrote, or writ, wrote, or wrote, whatever, that takes place all inside of a Target and stuff after a night, and some you know people break in when one guy's trying to clean up the store. I love that shit. There's another movie. It's called Tape. With like uh. What's his name again? I can't... Uh, uh, Ethan Hawke, I believe. He's uh, him and I think Gwyneth Paltrow and one other person. And it just takes place inside of a motel room. The whole movie, just inside of a motel room, people talking. I love that kind of movie. I love those kind of movies, that kind of concept for a movie. And this one, like I said, people stuck on an elevator and who has a bomb. Which, like I said, you quickly find out who has the bomb. And it's like, uh-oh, what are we going to do about this? It's really cool. It's kind of like the movie Devil, but without, like, you know, monsters being involved. You know what I mean? Like, sat satanic things or, well, you know, whatever. It's like real human type of stuff, you know? I liked it. I dug it. I suggest checking this one out. Elevator. Uh, next one up right here is from what's called Magnolia. Uh, and that is Apartment 143. On, on the cover here of this movie, Apartment 143, it says... Paranormal, t uh, paranormal activity in just about every possible way, but with, with more action. Kind of, there is more action going on in this movie. Um, like I said, it, in this movie, it's pretty much uh, this, fam this uh, family, this father with uh, a son and a daughter are having problems with, like, you know, weird things happening in their house. So they pretty much hire these people to come in and investigate and see what's going on. 
real simple, real simple story. These guys go in there, they're like, you know, taking pictures, videotaping, and you know, like they have cameras up on different angles and stuff like in Paranormal Activity. It's pretty much that, and then the little occurrences that they capture, and uh, how they find out what's really going on. There was a couple of um, real creepy moments in this movie, little things that popped out and kind of went, ugh, for a second. Those things always kind of get me with the, like, ah, and, like little pop, you know, little noises and stuff. That, I don't know what it is, that stuff always kind of gets me, you know, like little jumps and jump scares. But this movie wasn't fantastic, but it wasn't terrible. It was just kind of, like I said, it was just, I've been, I've been a lot of movies lately have been just kind of, bleh, you know, like lackluster, and there's a couple of good moments that are like, whoa, but, you know, that's pretty much it, but, you know, people go in there, little things happen, like in paranormal activity, like, you know, drawers open, or things get turned around, and, you know, you know how, you know how it goes in, like, you know, uh, paranormal activity kind of movies, but, uh, this is, if you like that, if you like, if you love those kind of movies, I suggest checking it out, you might, you might have fun with it, I, I did, I didn't hate it or anything, uh, another one right here, I got, Mar uh, Marley documentary on uh, Bob Marley but he was but he did grow up really poor and really you know had to you know scrimp and save and try to get money to do you know to feed himself pretty much because he you know there were some days he didn't eat anything and I don't know I just found this documentary really really insightful to me because I just really love Bob Marley's music and they really they have his daughter in there and Ziggy Marley his son in there in inter an interview with them and you know, different friends and family members talking about what what happened and how he died. You know, how he died and everything. And I just thought it was a very well done documentary. You don't see really these days really really good documentaries that when you watch it, you're really just like magnetized. Like I was just, you know, I was all, all up in it. You know what I mean? It was just one of those ones that was just really really like you know, really electric. I just really loved the the music and yeah. And, it's really cool. If you guys love Bob Marley's music and you want to know more about the man, check this out. It's really cool. Family members are in there talking about him. Uh, like his daughter didn't seem to like seem, seem to like him, but kind of like yeah, he was okay. He, has, he, his, he wasn't a great father, but he was okay. But uh, this movie was really cool. If you guys love documentaries, especially about Bob Marley, this is the one I suggest to go check out. And uh, there was one thing in here when he was doing a concert. And he did all the, you know, he was like, what was it called, dying from the cancer or whatever. And on his last show that he was performing, he did like like two or three, four encores and stuff. And he, you know, because he, he, he knew it was going to be his last show. And it's just really like, I don't know, I, I kind of choked up a little bit. But yeah, Marley, check this one out, guys. It's fantastic, especially if you love Barb Marley and his music. Alright, guys, the next movie up is ATM from MPI. And, uh... This movie was really f flipping like different, like one of those movies like I'm glad people are making, you know what I mean? Like something different than the normal Hollywood stuff. Um, this movie is pretty much about two friends going to a business party at night. You know their their business or you know their their work is having a party, and they're going to it. And uh, there's this one girl in there that one of the, this one guy likes, and it's her last day. And he really wants to like go out with her. He really wants to say something to her. So, uh, and she she's leaving the party early. So he's like, "Do you need a ride?" And all three of them end up in the car together. But Josh Peck, the kid from uh, you know uh, the Wackness, the kid from the Wackness, uh, gets in the gets in the car with them. But the other guy and the girl, you know, the, uh, his friend doesn't want him to get in the car because he really wants to get with this girl and take her home and you know, you know, just like maybe start a relationship with her. Yet he's like the third wheel getting in the car with them. And uh, he's like, hey, uh, you just, can you just take me home, man? It's all good. I need a ride home and stuff. And then, you know, he's like, okay, fine. We'll take you home. Hey, man, I'm kind of hungry. Can we get pizza? So, like, you know, they have to stop over at this ATM. And when, and when this thing happens, when they go to this ATM, they get stuck in this a ATM area because there's a killer outside standing out there trying to get them and getting people that are up and around there. So pretty much, like I said, I love movies that take place in, like, one area. This one takes place in an outdoor ATM, or you know, a, a sort of an indoor outdoor ATM. It's kind of a weird thing I've never seen before. There's like an like ATM in the middle of nowhere. It's kind of like, it's kind of weird. I don't think I've ever seen one of those before. But it's cool because they're stuck in this little room while a killer's outside trying to get in, but he, because he can't get in because they don't, he doesn't have a card to get in. It's kind of cool. And they're trying to get out of the room, you know, out of that thing without getting killed. And uh, it's really a, really a fun, inventive movie. 
yeah, man, this one was really, really, a really, really good one. Uh, this is one of those ones that stand, st stood out to me when I watched it earlier this year. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. I, 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 don't, I don't really know what else much more to say about it because that's pretty much the premise of the movie is them, you know, a third wheel getting in the car with the guy that wants to get with a girl that's on her last day of work. And he says, hey, stop over at the ATM. I want to get some money so I can go get some pizza. And they all go, they all end up in the ATM area, get stuck in there, and stuff goes down. Stuff goes crazy. But uh, this one is a real fun movie, real different, real, real, just real cool. Uh, next one right here from 20th Century Fox is Glee, Season 3. And this time, these guys uh, are going to Nationals, and they're graduating in this season. Uh, there's not really much going on plot-wise than you haven't seen in the other two seasons with the characters and stuff, you know, relationship problems and things like that. But I just really love this show. Not not for, like, the story that's going, like, you know, the, the little stories that happen in it. Just, like, the music stuff. You know, people going to music class, singing the songs, singing around, dancing, like, musical sequences. Just, I just really love that stuff because when I was in school, that's what I was doing, pretty much. Like, I did drama, I, or... They're, you know, they're a glee club. I wasn't a glee club like, oh, I wasn't singing in the rain or any of that stuff. You know, like I wasn't like dancing around. I did, I did dancing a little bit. But, you know, like this is glee club. I was in theater. Same sort of thing. Musical theater, theater, whatever. And the first play I ever did was Bye Bye Birdie. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I can relate to the show because that's what I did when I was in school. You know, like getting, you know, messed with, you know, because I was fat, of course. And, of course, uh, because I was in theater, and they thought I was weird. But uh, I'm weird anyway. But it's a real fun show. If you guys haven't seen it before, it's kids in school, and they bust out into song whenever. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's just really cool. You know, I just, I just, I love, love, love this show. If you guys are a fan, check it out. Third season out now, baby. <laughs> and, oh, and one last thing. I want this girl to be my girlfriend right there. Yeah, you know, you know, you know who she is. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. These next couple here are from the History Channel. And uh, before I go on to them to show you what I got, I'm sorry if you hear like air blowing and stuff because I have the air conditioning on. It's really kind of hot in here a little bit, so I just have the air going. It's probably like 90 outside or something, and it's like the middle of the night. But uh, yeah, these next up here are from History, and that's the I got Pawn Stars. Volume 4 and uh, Volume 5. This show is just awesome, you know. Um, it's one of my favorite reality one of my favorite reality shows on television right now. And uh, there's an episode or two in this in this uh, in this thing that I remember watching recently. Um, when a guy, because I when I watch the show, I always wonder because I'm you know I'm a DVD hoarder, right? You know I have a bunch of movies, and like you don't like you didn't already know that, and. Um, <laughs> And uh, this one guy comes in, you know, comes in there to sell some stuff, and he has like boxes and boxes and boxes. I'm just gonna put this one down. He has uh, boxes and boxes of like VHSs and cassette tapes and everything. And like he pulls them up, and I'm, cause I was always waiting to see if someone would go to the go over there and like have a bunch of like movies and try to you know pawn them or sell them to the store. And uh, you know, cause there's always like unique guns or you know like history type stuff. And this guy comes in and tries to sell this stuff, and he goes, it was the property of Sammy Davis Jr. And I'm just like, okay. It all, you know, it's like, say, say I have this DVD, and I bring it in to go pawn it or something, right? And I just go, a little, put a little sticker right here saying, property of Wet Movie 1. Yeah, that, that's, or like, you know, property of, you know, uh, whatever I can say, Ultimate Warrior from wrestling or something. And he was trying to sell it and stuff. I'm like... There's no way in hell that these guys are going to buy these old cassette tapes and VHS tapes and boxes. You know what I mean? Like, even some DVDs now are not really worth anything. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what he was thinking he, this guy was going to get from pawning, you know, Sammy Davis Jr.'s old cassette tapes and stuff. And, of course, you know, you have to watch the show to find out if, he, if the guy did it or not. But he didn't do it. He didn't get nothing. But uh, it's just one of those shows you watch. You be like, okay, is this person gonna get this for it? And you always, and you always see the you know um, the guys going, well, it's bro, it's a little broken here. It's a little rusty right there. I'll give you four hundred. And like the guy really wanted like nine hundred. You know what I mean? Like there, it's always wheeling and dealing. I always love that kind of stuff. And uh, that's from the History Channel right here. You know, big shout out to Susan. You're awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, these next two right here. Or, uh, is it called American Pickers Volume 4 and Volume 3? 
And it's just cool to see uh, Mike and Frank do their thing, going into like dirty, dirty, musty places to try to find a hidden gem in, <laughs> in those things. Uh, this, I'm, I'm, like I say, I'm, uh, volumes three and four. And uh, it's just pretty really cool when you, I, I just love things like that. You know, these guys go into like really, really dirty hoarders' places and try to find, like, you know, ooh, it's rusty, but is it really worth anything? You know, I'll give you 20 bucks for it, and they go off and make like a million bucks. You know what I mean? Like, you never know. It's just, I, I wouldn't be caught dead going into some of these places these guys go into. You know what I mean? Just to like try to find the stuff that's like, like buried underneath the dirt. And like, oh, look at that. There's only a couple of, you know, rat pellets on it. And like, it's still good. It's still good. And like the, the people that are, are like hoarding all this nasty stuff up, they're like, I'll get, I'll take 900 for it. I'm like, dude, it probably isn't worth a penny. And then you see like, you know, Frank or Mike or whatever go like, I'll give you $500 for it. And I'm just like, for that? You know, that's the kind of, this is the kind of show I watch. And I'm just like, really? You're going to pay that much for that? But, uh. I always love, uh, like I said, shows like this and Pawn Stars and, uh, you know, uh, Storage Wars and stuff like that. But uh, this is this is another really, really fun show. I suggest checking out from the History Channel. Alright, guys. These next two ones I want to show you here are from Twilight Time or ScreenArchives.com. Uh, this is the company that put out Fright Night, that bl the Blu-ray that, that sold out real quick. Because this company, every title this company puts out... Uh, is limited to 3,000, 3,000 units. So like, only 2,999 other people can possibly own this version of these movies, of, the, of their movies that they sell there. And the movie I got from them, the, I got two movies from them, and the first one I uh, want to talk about is As Good As It Gets on Blu-ray. Um, this movie is pretty much Jack Nicholson, Helen, it stars Jack Nicholson and Helen Hunt, Greg Kinnear, uh, it's called Cuba Gooden Jr., and uh, this movie is pretty much about Jack Nicholson. He has a really bad case of uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. And uh, he ends up going to this restaurant like every day at the same time. And uh, Helen Hunt works there. And uh, she has pro she's ha you know, she helps him because no one else in the, re the restaurant wants to help him because he's a, he's a nutcase. You know what I mean? He has to have certain things a certain way or he just doesn't want it. You know what I mean? He has to have the same seat, the same this, the same that. He even brings his own plastic, you know, utensils to eat the food with. And uh, no, one, no one in the restaurant really wants to deal with him. But Helen Hunt just seems to, okay, I'll do it, whatever. But, uh, you know, they don't really have, like, a big relationship. She's, like, she's just the only one that, you know, would put up with him. So, uh, she's had, you know, there's one or two times she doesn't end up showing up to work. And he goes crazy because he wants the same thing, same person, same food, same, you know, same seat, same everything. She's not there, so it throws him out of whack, and he's like, okay, what's going on with her? So he's, like, asking questions to people, like, where is she? And, uh, because she's, she's off of work because her son has a lot of, like, health problems. He can't really breathe, and, you know, it's, like, all this, all these problems. So, like, it's pretty much Jack Nicholson's trying to do anything to get her back to work. Like, he f tries to find out where she lives, she goes to where she lives, and... All this stuff, and she, you know what I mean? You have to watch this movie. It's this really, really well done movie, well acted, and everything. And uh, it's put out by Twilight Time. It's just, it's just, it's a really, really fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, the transfer on this was amazing, and uh, you 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 wouldn't you you're not gonna um, be disappointed if you pick this one up, guys. Beautiful picture, beautiful transfer, n beautiful movie. But uh, yeah, that's as good as it gets on Blu-ray. From Twilight Time, and this other one I got from the I got from Twilight Time also. It's one of those movies like I was talking about already in this update, and uh, the first time I ever saw this movie was because I was doing the play in in uh, elementary school. I think it was my second my second play I ever did. The first one I ever did was Scrooge, a musical was it's called Scrooge. I did at uh, the I forgot I forgot what theater it was. But I, I was in it with my mom. Like, I only had a little part in it, like, the guy, you know, the little boy in the, in the if you guys ever seen Scrooge or uh, A Christmas Carol or whatever, at the end of the movie when, like, you know, Scrooge, you know, wakes up from after all those ghosts visiting him and stuff, you know, he, he opens his window and he sees, like, a little boy outside, right? And he goes, boy, what day is it today? It's Christmas Day, of course. You know, and then he, like, has the boy go off and get, like, the biggest turkey or whatever. You know, the biggest turkey to go bring to the Cratchits and stuff like that. That was me in the play that I did back in the late 80s or whatever it was, early 90s. But the second play I ever did 
was called Bye Bye Birdie. And this one right here is put out by Twilight Time. And when I saw them that they were going to put this out, I'm like, oh my god, awesome. Because I've owned the VHS, I've owned the DVD of this movie, and now I got the Blu-ray. And, oh man, what I, I just got to say, the transfer on this was mind-blowing. Like, I put it in there, it it looked like it was like real people all up in the ice screen. Like, it was like one of those ones you feel like you could touch them and stuff. Like, it wasn't 3D or anything like that, but the transfer... To me, after watching these, watching this movie so many times, you know, back in the day, it just really stands out. It feels like I'm watching a brand new movie. You know what I mean? Like the sound, the picture, it's just amazing. But the quick, the quick story about the quick story of, of this movie is, you know, it takes place in like what, like the '60s or whatever. And um, this rocker, like Elvis type character, his name's uh, uh, Conrad Birdie, and he's coming down to. Uh, to the, the girl's town right here, uh, played by uh, Anne Margaret. Is that her name? Yes, Anne Margaret. Right, right, right. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I'm like second guessing myself now. Played by Anne Margaret because he's coming down there to uh, kiss kiss one fan before he go gets shipped off to the army. So he comes down there. Musical things are happening, and you know what I mean. It's it's just it's just one of those musicals that I absolutely love. And if you guys love musicals, especially from like the '60s, you like you know West Side Story or. Uh, What's it called? What's that one called again? How to Succeed in Business? But I don't think that was the 60s. I think that was a little bit later than that. But uh, if you guys have seen this movie before, it stars Dick Van Dyke doing what he does best, singing and dancing, doing his thing like he does in Mary Poppins type of thing. That's my favorite type. That's my favorite Dick Van Dyke character. Like, in movies, I want to be... If I, you know, if I ever, like... You know, when I was, like, a little kid and I was, like, thinking about... Ooh, if I ever did movies, I, I want to be, like, Dick Van Dyke and John Cusack put together you know what I mean that's that's what I want to be like in the movies but if you guys have never seen Bye Bye Birdie and you love musicals I suggest checking this one out and uh, you can get these movies and other movies from uh, Twilight Time exclusively at screenarchives.com check out the you know in my description box next to the titles of these movies you'll see the link to that website down there you won't be disappointed because these guys do amazing transfers of the, of the movies that I've seen so far and plus to all limited to 3,000 so, you know, you, you can't go wrong, you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to get that. There's not that many of them out there. So, I suggest checking out ScreenArchives.com. Get by by Birdie. Get as good as it gets. Check out the website. They have a bunch of other cool ones on there. And, uh, yeah, those, uh, I just love Bye Bye Birdie, man. That's the jam right there. And uh, the next one right here is from Lionsgate. And that is uh, Total Recall, the Mind Bend Edition, the Mind Bending Edition. I haven't seen this one <laughs> in a long time. And boy, is it cheesy, but a whole lot of fun. Um, it's pretty much about a guy that wants to go... You guys all know the story. I don't probably even have to say anything. You probably just saw the remake already, which I don't really don't want to see the remake for some... You know, I'm just like, yeah, I don't care. Like, I'll probably rent it for free or something, but uh, this one, it's just a lot of cheese, a lot of just awesome Arnold. You know what I mean? Uh, guy, going, guy goes into a thing for, like, a vacation to put a plant implant into his mind. So he can, like, you know, be transported to somewhere else. Like, you know, just, like, in his memory. And then, you know, stuff goes crazy and goes all wrong. Ape shit. But, uh, it's just cool. The effects in this movie is just, um, like, they don't they don't make effects like this anymore. They don't, like, do movies like this anymore. I just absolutely love it. And this is also the second version, second time it's been on Blu-ray. And this time it's been a director, director approved. I can't even say stuff right right now. It's been a director, director approved. Appro 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 approved. <laughs> no, but like this transfer was absolutely awesome. Uh, uh, leaps and bounds above the transfer that came out on the original release of the Blu-ray. Uh, it really shines on my uh, HD TV. If you guys have uh, have it on like DVD or VHS or that, even the other Blu-ray that came out of this, pawn those other ones or sell those other ones. Get this mind-bending edition. You won't go wrong. <laughs> It's, it's really cool. Like, I don't want to say all the story. You guys all know about it. You've seen all the reviews recently about all, all that stuff. It's really good. Really, really fun. And these other two right here from Lionsgate also. And that is, uh, what's it called? Power Rangers Super Samurai Volume 1 and Volume 2. Um, you guys all know I just uh, recently got the Power Ranger box sets. And if you don't know, my review, my review for those will be up after this video in a day or so. But uh, these are the Sam, you know, Power Ranger Samurai. And just like, these ones come with like each like four or five episodes a piece. Uh, it's just it, it's not as to me. 
It doesn't have that same like awesome factor as like the old Power Ranger ones do. But it's still cool because you still see Paul Schreier in there, the guy that play, still playing Bulk in, in the series. I, I've seen a couple of episodes of these already. And it's really fast paced. More fast paced than the other one, you know, the old school Power Rangers were. And uh, it's still cool because it's Power Rangers and Saban finally took the you know name back for Power Rangers. I think they're like, I think I was called. I forgot what season it was when Saban didn't have it anymore, and they were like putting out like Dino Thunder and all this other stuff. And I don't think Saban's name was on it. But uh, if you guys love Power Rangers, just like to have you know a handful of episodes. These ones are cool to check out. Um, it's cool because like the thing I was saying about being fast cut, like a couple episodes, I'm like, oh cool, Bulk is in it. You know what I mean? And, uh, he's probably in, like, the episode's like 22 minutes, right? 20 minutes, 21, 22 minutes long. He has, like, a minute or maybe even two minutes of screen time in an episode. Or less. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, I'm bulk. You know, and they cut to the action, cut back to the book. Like, it's real, real in and out stuff with him. This is like, it must be the easiest job on the planet to do right now for him. But, uh, that's, uh, what's it called? The uh, Power Rangers Super Samurai. The super, the super showdown and the super powered black box. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. I, I, I don't wanna lie. I haven't seen a, uh, episodes of the, the samurai uh, ones before on television. You know, because I have a job and I go to work and I, I'm not here to watch it around those times because I'm working. But it's just cool to see that they're still on and now Saban has the rights back to it and it's just really cool. And yeah, it's really cool. Like slip covers on there too. Uh, Power Rangers Samurai, baby. All right, guys. This next one is from Kino, and that is Mr. Hush on Blu-ray. And uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the story. It's uh, pretty much this uh, suburban family living in their house, doing their, you know, doing their daily day stuff. You know, going in the kitchen, getting ready for bed, whatever. And they get a knock on the door, and this one guy's like, you know, can I uh, come in and use your phone or your bathroom or whatever it was? You, you know, they're like, yeah, sure, come on in. You know, and then. The guy's doing whatever he's doing. The guy turns around and he see, you know, the, the the husband of the house sees his wife's neck get slit, and the guy's in there and he just killed his wife, and then stuff goes crazy and, and then years later, uh, I don't know. It's just I I don't I can't really lie to you. I couldn't really follow the story that much because I was taken out of the movie by the acting. The acting was just I don't know if it was bad or if if the over the topness of the acting was supposed to. It was the that's what the director wanted, but like there was a couple of parts in this movie. It was just like, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, there's like there's a girl downstairs, trapped. Like you know, she cha she's chained up to a pole, right? She can't move, and like something bad's going off. Uh, you know, something bad's happening, and uh, she's like, "Mom, my mommy, my mom, my mommy." Like I'm like, what? Who the hell says that? Like who says stuff like that? And it's just some. This, the acting was just, like, some guy could be talking like this to you, like, oh, man, what's going on? And then, like, two se half a second later, I'm going to fucking kick your ass. You know, like, out of nowhere, I'm like, what? I, 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 I don't usually, like, like say, say a lot of bad stuff about a movie, but I, d I don't want to say anything bad about it. I just can't really recommend it, okay? Um, it, it, it's, uh, oh. Mr. Hush on Blu-ray, it's, it has Brian O'Halloran in it, uh, you know him from Clerks and uh, Clerks 2 and stuff like that, he played Dante in the movie, the movies, uh, Clerks, but you only see him at the end of the credits and stuff, and, uh, that, that was cool, seeing him in the movie, um, I just, I just don't like saying bad things about a movie, but I just had a really hard time getting into Mr. Hush, and, uh, yeah, that's Mr. Hush on Blu-ray, uh, Next up right here, I got Phenomenon on Blu-ray. I got this one off Amazon. And uh, it's one of my favorite John Travolta movies next to, like, you know, Saturday Night Fever and Grease and stuff like that. This one is about a guy that can, uh, one night on his 37th birthday, he steps out of the bar that he's having his birthday party in, and he sees this light, and it flashes, and then, he, you know, all of a sudden, you know, he can, like, read, fat, you know, read, like, three books a day. He can, like, move stuff with his mind and... You know what I mean? He can, like, do... He, his senses are just heightened. And that's pretty much the story, and the, you, have to, you have to find out what really hap what happens and stuff, but it's just a really wonderful story. I always love the music, the song, you know, that... You know, if I could change the world... You know, that, that whole song that they had for this movie. 
uh, I believe a couple of the special features that were on the DVD, or, or were, like the, I think they had a music video on the DVD version, but it's not on this. But uh, this movie is just absolutely wonderful, and the the one thing that stood out to me when I put this Blu-ray in is like this is like this is like Blu-ray news right now. When I put this Blu-ray in, the first thing I, I saw was a flash, and it said Roger Rabbit 25th Anniversary Edition. And I'm like, huh? 25th Anniversary Edition? Ooh. You know, like, Nerd sent his Aunt Tingle. And, um, then they had a trailer for, like, the 25th Anniversary Edition. I don't think they really talked about special features or anything. But the transfer on that trailer was amazing! I can't wait to see the 25th Anniversary of, Ro you know, Who Framed Roger Rabbit on Blu-ray. That's gonna be amazing. But if you guys haven't seen Phenomenon before, I suggest checking this one out. It's a real touching story. But, uh, man, Roger Rabbit's gonna be awesome! <laughs> Alright guys, and these last two I want to show you are from Legion Films, and that is a 1935 version of Scrooge on Blu-ray, to the special edition actually, and this one uh, is a 1935 version of uh, Scrooge, you guys like, you know, you all know the story that I talked about already pretty much, is uh, Scrooge uh, is a really rich guy, he works for his own little, com his little own company back in the olden days, and uh, he's just really stingy with his money, he has this guy working for him named Bob Cratchit, and uh, he has, you know, he, he has a really poor family and stuff like that. Like, Scrooge is so stingy. Like, Bob Cratchit just wants to put a few pe pieces of coal on the, you know, the, you know, warm himself up. And he's like, you know how much coal costs? You know, stuff like that. He's like real stingy, real mean to people. And uh, it's pretty much him going home and then, be, you know, being visited by a, a handful of ghosts. You know, like the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, you know, stuff like that. And, uh, this version is okay. My favorite Scrooge version so far that I've seen is the, I believe the 70s one with Albert Finney. That was my favorite one, the, the, the musical ones. This one is like the original version, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, the Blu-ray transfer is good, but not, like, shining, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, like they needed to do, like, you know, 4K restoration or something on it. But, uh... It's cool because it has a bonus feature on here, A Christmas Wish, starring Jimmy Durante. And I remember watching that one when I was a kid, too. That was really good. And that, that's just a DVD that comes with this one right here. It's uh, the Scrooge Blu-ray and uh, A Christmas Wish DVD in there. Uh, it, it was cool. I like, I, I, I like seeing A Christmas Wish. I haven't seen that one in a while. It was cool revisiting it. And uh, it's put out by Legion Films, so it, it's pretty cool. But I think the Scrooge transfer could have been a little bit better, but it is from 1935, so I don't know if there's really that much you can really do to the picture. But this next one, on the other hand, is just amazing. Like, I, I think I've seen this one other time in my life, and I was just getting, you know, getting ready for the new release of the one with, uh, you know, Steve Martin and uh, Rick Moranis that's coming out. And that is the original Little Shop of Horrors, but on Blu-ray. And this version right here co includes the... It's, it's fully restored and it comes with the black and white and the colored version of the movie. And uh, it's just really, really cool. It's one of those movies. It's, it's, a, it's a Roger Corman movie. And it's just, you know, you guys all know Roger Corman doing like Piranha and stuff like that. But uh, this one is about a guy that works in a plant shop. And he, bring, you know, he brings this plant that he, he's been, you know, he's been growing at home. And uh, it opens up and it, it's... You know, he's like, hey, I don't know what to feed you. And the plant's like, feed me. You know what I mean? And then, like, he accidentally pricks his finger and blood drops into the plant's, you know, mouth and stuff. He's like, mmm. And then the plant starts to get bigger and bigger because all it, all it feeds on is blood or people. And it's just, it's just really wacky. And this is also the one that, you guys all know the story of this if you guys have seen it before. You know, this starts growing and growing and people in the town are going to the, the store to watch it grow. And, oh, my God, when is the buds going to bloom? You know what I mean? It's just it's just over the top and crazy and the plant goes, Feed me, I'm hungry! You know? I really love the, this one too because it has Jack Nicholson in there for like a a little quick cameo. He's like at the dentist scene and stuff getting his teeth pulled or whatever. And uh, yeah. But it's, it's just really cool to see Jack Nicholson back in the day. It also says featuring Jack Nicholson on the box here. I ended up watching the colored version of this and it looked pretty good. Even though, like, everyone in the movie seemed to have the same color, you know, sk same skin tone and everything. But uh, it was still a low, whole lot of fun to watch. And it also has right here uh, a commentary by Mike Nelson from uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. So if you want to watch this movie with commentary on it, you can also do that. 
But uh, I, I just found this one to be a whole, whole lot of fun. I haven't watched this in years. And uh, just getting myself psyched up for that other one being put out by Warner Brothers soon. That this it could be even awesomer. But this one, I'll probably get to check out again real soon. Again, you know, I just watched it. I'm probably going to watch it in another week or so. But uh, that's Little Shop of Horrors on Blu-ray put out by Legion Films. And that is my update for today, guys. Thank you for sitting through it. It's been kind of long. I think, I think it's been like three weeks now since my last one almost. Something like that. But, uh, yeah. That's all my hoardings I, <laughs> I got over the last uh, couple weeks. And uh, thank you guys all so much for coming by and watching. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye-bye.